In unsettling news, I can reveal that the Australian Museum has invited a renowned Egyptian archaeologist to give a lecture, despite the fact that he's made clearly offensive comments about Jews in the past. Dr Zahar Hawass is to give a lecture as part of the current Ramses and the Gold of the Pharaohs exhibition. Dr Hawass has previously said that Israel is the Zionist enemy I gave this enemy a strong slap in the face. He's also had this to say in an interview. Now, these comments were made in 2011. We reached out to the museum and this was their spokesperson's response to us tonight. They said, Dr Hawass is a world-renowned Egyptologist and an advocate for the conservation of Egypt's ancient monuments. Dr Hawass is the curator of the Ramses and the Gold of the Pharaohs exhibition, which was produced by the World Heritage Exhibitions. They said Dr Hawass regularly speaks to audiences around the world as, and is visiting Sydney as part of his commitment to the exhibition. They said it is their understanding that the claims made against Dr Hawass, sorry, the claims made, surely they didn't mean to say the claims made against Dr Hawass, maybe by Dr Hawass, date from 2009 and 2011 and that he has fully rejected the characterisation of these views. Well, joining me now is former defence intelligence analyst Paul Monk. Paul, great to see you again. Look, what do you think about Maybe this? Sorry. They're hailing someone as a prestigious visiting guest, and of course he is that, but he has also made very offensive comments about Jews in the past. If this were anyone else who'd made such offensive comments about another group of individuals, they would be counselled by our society, not held up in such high esteem. Absolutely. I mean, the comments that he made, which you quoted directly, could have been lifted straight out of the notorious protocols of the elders of Zion. They most flagrant anti-Semitism, and there's no informed or responsible person who could deny that. So to be a little facetious, it seems to me he is a strong candidate for being harassed while he's mm -hmm. out here. Many people get harassed because of views that they express, sometimes ill-considered views, to be sure. But the views he's advanced should be condemned in no uncertain terms. And, and uh, the fact that he's not even being criticised, much less, as we would say, deplatformed, is a mark mm -hmm. against the Australian Museum. People have lost their jobs. They've been sacked from positions for far less than the comments that he manifestly made. No, absolutely. I mean, people are losing their jobs for using the wrong pronouns, even accidentally. And here's someone who has said very offensive comments about Drew Shaw. It was 2009 and 2011, but he was an adult when he made them. It wasn't like he was a teenager. So, um, you know, it is offensive. We do uh, absolutely. know... Absolutely. And... Mm. Continue. Oh, I was just going to say, he, he, he ought to be asked in an interview, um, one way or another while he's here, do you retract those comments? Do you admit that they were outrageous, that they were straight out of the protocols of the elders of Zion? Yes. And, yep. and my guess is he would try and dodge the question or he might even put his foot right in the rabbit hole and reiterate mm. sentiments of that kind, in which case he's condemned out of his own mouth. Mm. Uh, the, uni the, universe, sorry, the Australian Museum also sent us comments that Dr Hawass had made previously where he says he's not an anti-Semite, he's got nothing against the Jews, he says the Jews are his best friends, 95% uh, of my good friends were Jews, but they... But then, but they agree with me completely. So, ah, uh, there you go. Very unusual well, I comments. Mean, yeah. Just take his statement that the Jews have a plan and they control the entire world. Uh, That's the essence of, of historical anti-Semitism, uh, anti uh, you know, yes. and, and it really needs to be held to account. Yeah. And by the way, this hasn't been reported before. We're reporting it now for the first time tonight. So uh, presumably the Australian Museum will come under pressure over this tomorrow if other media outlets follow this up. Now, Paul, former Prime Minister Scott Morrison has said in a podcast that he thinks China has the potential to be a democracy. Have a listen. There's a view that some put around that, oh, you know, democracy can't work in Chinese culture. Well, it's crap. <laughs> um, I've been to Taiwan. <laughs> There's nothing inherently uh, anti-democratic in the ethnic genes of, 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 uh, 
of people of Chinese descent. Um, they care just as much as about freedom as we do. Sadly, in, in mainland China, they don't have the opportunity for it. Paul, I think what a lot of people forget is that while, um, you know, there has been the communist regime in China about 15 years ago, and Alexander Downer speaks about this when he was foreign minister, China was far less aggressive than it is at the moment. There has definitely been a shift in the Communist Party's approach under Xi. There absolutely has. Two points need to be made very clear about this. The first is that Scott Morrison is absolutely correct when he says that there is nothing intrinsic to Chinese ethnicity, Chinese language, Chinese culture, which would prevent China from becoming a democracy. What stands in the way of China becoming a democracy is the Chinese Communist Party. It made the decision in 1989 to brutally crush a democracy movement. And throughout its rule, it has crushed those who have called for democratic reforms in the 1950s, in the 1960s, in the 1970s, in the 80s, in the 1990s. Uh, Liu Xiaobo, you know, uh, helped bring together in 2008 the, the Charter 08 calling for democratic reforms of a perfectly sensible kind in China. He was imprisoned and he died in prison. That's the Communist Party. It's not Chinese culture. Mm. Um, and the second thing that needs to be said is uh, that they've had every chance since the 1980s to show that they are capable of moving in the direction that the Guomindang did in Taiwan and allowing the political participation of other organisations, allowing the opening up of civil society. Not only have they not done that, Xi Jinping has explicitly ruled, pardon me, has mm. explicitly ruled it out. He's going in the opposite direction. So we now need to be really clear. There can be democracy in China. It will not happen under the Chinese Communist Party. It will certainly not happen under Xi Jinping. Mm, mm. And look, Which no means one knows, Xi Jinping no... needs to die or go. Oh, and he's already, what is he? Is he 80 now? Seven, what, how old is, is she? No, 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 he's only, he's only in his late 60s. He could late be around, 60s. unfortunately, for quite a while. Yeah, all right. Well, that's even more disappointing. All right. No one knows more about this topic than you, <laughs> Paul Monk. Paul was the head of the China desk at the Defence Intelligence Organisation, so an expert indeed.